Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the International Fab Talks. It's a fabulous day out there for all of us. Let's make it even more better by celebrating the life of a very special and beautiful lady who's here with us. She is Chandana C. She's joining us all the way from Bangalore, Karnataka, India. She's a lovely person filled with lots of energy and positivity. And you talk to her and she's all yours. She will really make you feel warm, comfortable and make you feel pleasant in her company. Join us, friends, to invite our celebrity and guest. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session, dear. Hello, ma'am. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation to the International Fab Talks, ma'am. It is really a pleasure to have you. And you have such humility within you. You have such, you know, kindness and you're so humble. We rarely find this amongst the youth. Some are quite harsh, some are rude, some are filled with ego. But you're a very down-to-earth person. The way you speak makes the other person really feel comfortable and happy to connect with you, bond with you. That's really nice. And I would love Same. everyone to have this energy the way ma'am has. Chandana ma'am. Same here ma'am. Thank you so much. Oh sweet. Thank you dear. Dear ma'am, I give you all the uh, control of this session and I would like you now to share about your journey as to how you would be able to describe yourself or how would you take this opportunity to define yourself. Over okay. Thank you. So to talk about my journey, like it's a very long journey, but I'll try to make it as short as possible. So my name is Chandana Chandrasekhar and I was born and brought up in Bangalore. So I was, uh, I am totally blind and partially hearing a hearing impaired person. Uh, so uh, to talk about my journey, how my parents got to know that I am blind. So I was born like any other normal, uh, I mean, I would not call it normal. I, I was born like any other child uh, for a family. So everything was fine. Everything uh, was going uh, happy in the family as well. So uh, gradually when I started growing up, uh, um, maybe when I was uh, two, two and a half years, so um, I used to look only straight. I used, I never used to look towards the sideways. So uh, when I started going for my pre-KG, so that is when the teacher recognized that um, there's a game called blocks or something. You need to insert the blocks into a hole. So when that was happening, uh, they recognized that I am feeling the holes and inserting them instead of using my vision. So that is when the teacher spoke to my parents and said that, um, you know, there must be some problem with her vision. So you must get it uh, tested. So uh, when my parents took uh, me to the doctor, so they got to know that uh, I have something called as uh, retinitic pigmentosa. And uh, when I was small, I had partial vision, narrow vision, uh, where I used to see only straight, not towards my side uh, and all that. So it was a big shock for my family. It was a very big shock for my parents um, as to how they should bring me up, what they should do. So all of those things. And um, the first and foremost thing was, it was very difficult for them to accept me, um, you know, accept that I have a challenge like this. So uh, slowly, um, you know, life has to go on. So they started uh, uh, putting me to a school because I, I, they never used to find that I'm different. So everything was going fine with me. So they used to, uh, they put me to a school and um, I used to write my notes on my own, but I never, I was not able to read my notes. So my mom, um, she used to write in large print and dark sketch pen uh, so that I'll be able to uh, read. And uh, she used to sit us together and, um, you know, teach me. So for them, um, uh, finding a school was also a very big challenge. So they um, had to uh, search for a school uh, where they would accept me. She didn't, uh, she didn't want to put me to a blind school uh, because she wanted me to study like my brother, like I have a brother. Uh, who's younger than me so she want she didn't want any difference between me and him so we uh, both are equal to any parent so she wanted me to also study in a regular uh, school so finally um, through plastic society through national association for the blind they found a school called uh, tundraj high school where uh, 10 years i studied and my life was 
very comfortable very easy with the support of my parents teachers uh, they gave me a lot of support in everything uh, that i required so my mom i used to uh, write in large print she used to come to school write all the notes or in all the books because i was not able to write all the notes so she used to copy and then she used to convert that into large print and then i used to study so whenever i used to feel that my eyes are getting strained so she used to sit with me and um, teach so that's how smooth it was till my 10th standard so once i completed my 10 um, 10th um, i did my 11th and 12th and in the meantime um, my uh, as i came to my 4th standard 5th standard 6th standard so my uh, i used to write my own exams um, uh, although i never used to understand what i wrote my teachers used to understand but gradually um, i lost my vision it was deteriorating and that was told by doctor uh, you know when i got it tested itself um, every year i used to go for a regular checkup and they were like you know we can't do anything this this is there is no treatment or medicine for it so we have to accept it and move on so uh, my vision was deteriorating gradually and um, i never realized that the most uh, funny part was i never realized that my vision was deteriorating i used to imagine okay there are some dark black lines and i am writing on it uh my handwriting became worse so uh, when i um, you know when teachers could not understand my handwriting during my 7th standard so that is when they realized that somebody else have to write my exam so they call them scriber so what i they will ask me whatever is in the question paper question by question and i have to dictate the answer to them and they will write it for me so my library teacher or whoever teacher used to be free um for, at that point of time they used to write my exam so then i happened to my turning point was when i learned braille so uh, there was a teacher her name is ruby literally it was a blessing for me she came to teach music to our school and uh, she is also blind and uh, instead of learning music the first thing she taught me was braille and that what changed my life because till then um, you know i was in a stage where i couldn't read large print i couldn't read anything and i had no clue what to do and she came and it was literally like an eye opener to me where she taught me braille and i used to write all my notes in braille and i used to study on my own um until then my mom used to uh, sit us together and read out everything to me even after that uh, she did that because everything it was very tough for me to convert it to braille but at least whatever little i could do um, i could write down in braille and read so that's how i completed my 10th and uh, 11th and 12th also um, uh i studied accounts because i am not a person of history and um, you know arts or all of that so that is not my cup of tea so that was also another stage where uh, you know it took a lot of convincing for the teachers that i could do uh, accounts so sophia has also gave me a very big opportunity i was the only um, blind student studying there and um, the my my friends also supported me a lot um uh, the two years that i studied there was really awesome i learned a lot and um, uh, it was very precious for me um where i was accepted uh, where i was though i was different i was accepted very well there so i completed my 11th and 12th uh, at sofia high school and then um i continued to do my bcom at uh, mount carmel college and when i was studying uh, my final year uh, through campus recruitment itself i got my um, job at ernst young and this is my 8th year at evi so this is my short um, life journey so there was a lot of um, you know challenges and lot of things on the way but um, with the support of my family friends teachers lot of well wishes i overcame it and i am here today wonderful dear thank you for sharing that beautiful journey you were so positive right from the start till now uh, till you ended where you ended just now that was really wonderful to be so positive uh, about your life and the acceptance that you received 
the beautiful acceptance that you received from your fa family members, especially your mom. And she wanted to give you equal opportunities like she gave to your brother or your brother had all those things. She wanted you to have the same access to all the beautiful things that this world could offer. Dear ma'am, as you also mentioned, friends were there to help you, guide you and support you. That's really nice. The management and school. And you mentioned your teacher, your favorite teacher, your music teacher who taught you Braille. And that's wonderful. Excellent. And you're working uh, since eight years in the same organization. Hats off to you for all of your achievements till date. Dear ma'am, you also mentioned towards the end challenges. In spite of the challenges, you really rose up and you know faced life bravely and you are doing that even right now till date. Now, if I may ask you ma'am, what kind of challenges did you have to face or what kind of challenges you had to face, if I put it that in the right way? So, um, uh, more than challenges, uh, like for example, um, wherever uh, you are new, right? So, um, um, they will uh, think that, okay, uh, you know, this person might not be able to do anything. So, uh, accepting me, proving to them that, uh, you know, I can do it. So that is also uh, one of the biggest challenges. So my mom had to come uh, to school, uh, convince them, uh, no, she can do it. We will all support her and all of those things. And um, another major challenge was converting my books into Braille. So because I cannot write entire textbook into Braille. So my mom had to get the textbook, scan it for me. She used to be awake till night, uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, uh, scan it. And for Braille, um, you have to convert it into a software. And before converting that, all the editing should be done so that the spelling mistakes and uh, whenever you scan, right, the corners and all the words will be cut. So she has to see the textbook, uh, make all those uh, corrections, convert it into a software, take it to an organization and get it printed so that was also a major challenge and organizations also you know um, used to take a lot of time to get it done so i never used to get my braille um, notes on time and that used to affect my studies as well so to uh, solve that i had a um, great support like a family friend of mine uh, who saw an article uh, when i was studying in 11th standard an article came about me in bangalore mirror and um, through that article um, i got a great family as a support his name is paul and his mom merlin ma'am so they both became um, a very very great source of support for us so my biggest surprise was i never i used to write my notes in a braille slate so by the time you write three pages in a braille slate your hand starts paining but um, to study i had to write it but to solve that problem i got a brailler i never i used to only see the brailler a uh, braille by brailler i mean it's a braille typewriter so i only used to see that in big big institution and i've never thought i could have um, you know my own braille typewriter so i got that as a gift surprise gift from uh, paul and marlin ma'am and to continue that they also um, got me a braille embosser which helps me to convert braille um, books at home itself using that embosser so before i had to go to an organization to get that uh, braille print but once i got the embosser so uh, everything used to happen at home itself so there was no delay so before my exam starts i used to have all my um, study material in in hand so there was no delay so that also was a biggest support that paul and marlin ma'am uh, gave uh, to our family so i can never forget them so even now they always pray and wish good support uh, for our family so that that was another like major challenge um, you know during my uh, studying time Wow, that's really nice, ma'am. You've shared it so yeah. well. And I'm so happy for you that you've got it. You've got to own that. As yeah, you said, I'm very much blessed. Yes, <laughs> that's really nice. 
you got to see it at some big institutions, but then finally you had the opportunity to own one and it was of great use to you. That's really yes. Nice. And thanks to the kind hearted people who were with you and who are still with you. Dear ma'am, now if I may ask you about friendship, how have friends been to you? Um, friends, you know, it's a very, very, very big blessing. So I have a lot of friends with me uh, today from my school, um, uh, in my company, it may be in, in my Rotary. I, I, I also, I'm also part of Rotary, uh, a club called Rotary Club of Bangalore Abilities. So I joined Rotary in the year uh, 2019. And um, uh, I have very uh, few, very, very close friends who I interact um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they're all very supportive. They're there for me whenever I ask them for support. They never say no for anything. And one more um, I thing I like to highlight is especially during my college times and school times. So for every test, for every exam, I needed a scriber to write. So I had a bunch of friends who used to fight to come and write my exam. So if I call, I had to just call one or two people and they used to have their own uh, set of friends and they'll discuss and they, they used to fight, no, I'll go and write her exam, I will go. So it was that kind of support I got. And also um, I had two, three friends who were very regular, like um, uh, especially uh, she was my junior, her name is uh, Aishwarya. She was my junior and also I had my, uh, uh, senior uh, she was my college senior and my family friend her name is Harsha so these two people were always there for me whenever I just had to call them and say I have my exam and so and so dates so if you are free can you come and they never say no to me and whatever support I need um, in college or teaching me anything whenever I don't understand anything so they used to make me understand teach me so that kind of like um, support I got during my uh, college times and even now uh, I have my rotary family and um, um, you know very close friends um, uh, his name is Arun and uh, uh, so many of them like they're always there for me like I'm, I'm very blessed in terms of family and friends um, they, whenever I go low or whenever I feel uh, demotivated they're always there to cheer me up and uh, you know keep me going so i never felt um, i never feel i have never felt left out uh, you know till now either in my family or with my friends that's really nice that's really great dear that's so nice and Aishwarya has been a source of great support to you. I love this when you said my fr friends would fight over each other like I would write the exam for her or I will do that favor for her or I will go ahead and be with her during the exam time. Yeah, they were nice. my Sophia friends. Mm -hmm. So they were, and in one more thing I just want to say in Sophia was like, um, uh, like the whole school used to know me. Like the first day of school, principal introduced me to the whole school. And wherever I'm sitting alone or, um, you know, I'm just sitting under a tree or I'm sitting somewhere, uh, they used to come and talk to me, even fifth standard, sixth standard kids. But it was so difficult for me to remember their names. I used to feel bad that I'm not able to remember their names. But still, they wouldn't mind. They used to come and say hi to me um, and take me around. Um, you know, that was a like wonderful environment uh, I had in that school. Wow, that's nice. Do you remember any of the teachers who were very good to you? I remember a lot of them. Uh, my accounts teacher uh, in Sophia's, her name is Sirisha. And my economics teacher, my economics teacher, um, um, her name is Miss Belly Appa. And um, graphs were very difficult for me. So what he, what she used to do was, um, uh, there were jute wires, right? So she used to stick that jute wires on a KG cardboard, like, like graph shape, come next, uh, next day, and she used to hold my hand, touch that graph, and explain to me uh, the concept. Because she, uh, for other students, she used to draw on the board, right? So they would see and understand. But for me, I had to, um, you know, understand it in a different way. So she used to, uh, especially from 11th and 12th, she used to um, do everything at her home. 
and bring it for me next day and uh, and i used to bring it home and she used to teach me in school and then i used to bring it home and look at that and practice that's and even my accounts teacher uh, i can never forget um, she used to take extra classes to me um uh, because uh, i need practice because i cannot practice on my own so she used to ask her students to sit with me and practice read out the questions and she gave me a lot of practice in my uh, 12th standard board exam all my sums got tallied so that was like the happiest moment for me and also my english teacher her name is uh, miss lali so she also supported me a lot and uh, principal her name is sister priscilla even now uh, she messages me she prays for me and even now all of them are in touch with me and um, you know they all wish good for me also my tanbridge uh, principal her name is um, miss morin ocha she is also in touch with me and uh, she always wishes uh, good for me she blesses me and throughout the 10 years that i was there in that school she took care of me so well that you know any challenges i have she was so open to me and uh, she used to solve all the challenges that i used to uh, face and they uh, even in tandridge high school they never exclude because i am blind she never excluded me um, even when it comes to sports or when it comes to march pass or uh, in that school we had around 10 um, visually impaired students studying when i was studying there so equal uh, opportunity she gave to us along with the other students those two are the best schools that i have studied uh, in you know tandridge high school and sophias uh, tandridge high school was the foundation for me and sophias was a stepping stone which also changed my life both the schools have played a major role in my life beautiful you know that's really very nice i'm so happy to hear all of that and we need people like these to be in our lives that's absolutely really nice. yes dear especially the teachers the management the principal the students when they contribute to our life in a positive way it's really a blessing it's like heaven on earth yeah because yeah. they all supported me i am here today so confident so bold so courageous um, you know leading my happy life really truly that's so nice ma'am maybe now know about your professional journey now you are a professional would you like to enlighten us about it uh i joined um, uh, for an audit team i was working for an audit team called audit management support so basically i am a person who loves numbers playing with numbers so when i joined uh, ey i was working on excel so excel was my biggest strength so more than telling about uh, what i work i'll just uh, give a brief background about how i work so i work on a laptop so uh, basically everyone will have a question i am totally blind and i'm also partially hearing impaired how i will use my laptops and phones so basically uh, today technology is the biggest uh, asset or strength for person like me so when it comes to my laptop there are two softwares that i use which is called job access with speech which is called jaws and non visual desktop access nvda so these two softwares help me to work very effectively on the system so mostly i use uh, keyboard i don't use the touchpad or mouse because uh, i cannot see the cursor on the screen so with the help of keyboard shortcuts and um, uh, you know this software uh, which uh, speaks out um, let's say for example uh you you have uh, hey siri or okay google in your phone right so when you say hey siri what's the time it gives you speech output right the same way when i type something on my keyboard so it gives me um speech output so like for example i open notepad and i type uh, hi chandana so when i'm typing the letters it speaks out h i space c h a n d a n a so same way um you know whatever i do i i i listen and i interact with the system so in the same way uh, phone has a different software like android has something called as a 
talkback which you can enable in the accessibility um, section of your settings so in android there is something called as talkback and in uh, iphone there is something called as voiceover which will help you to interact so for me um, most of my work happens in uh, phone or laptop so be it ordering food or uh, uh, be it doing anything so most of the things um, uh, because of technology uh, you know reading anything um, uh, whatever it may be so most of my work happens in phone or laptop so that's how I joined EY and uh, with the great support of my colleagues, they train me very well. So uh, what I do is uh, usually uh, people say that they will share their screen and uh, they will show what to do. But in my case, I will uh, talk to the trainer beforehand itself and I will tell uh, I will prefer a one on one training because a group training will not help me that much. So what I do is I will tell them that I will share my screen and you tell me what to do and if it is working out or not, you know, we both interact and uh, make things work out. So that's how um, I work. So right now um, I'm working for operations and mobility and uh, I take care of operations uh, and mobilities and expenses and all of that for my team. And my team is being a very great support to me uh, whenever I'm stuck anywhere, whenever I, I feel like, uh, you know, I need some help. I just have to ping them or call them. They're always, um, you know, there for me and they just help me to resolve the challenge. Wonderful, dear. That's really so nice. You have a supportive team and that's really a blessing to have people who really care for you in the right way. And uh, you're you're one person like wanting to learn, have, have that, you have that spirit within you, wanting to learn, yes. to give back. Every day is a learning. Every day it teaches you something new and uh, whenever I go out, whenever I meet new people, so something new is there to, something positive message, something new is there to take from them. So that's what I feel. That's wonderful. That's very true. It's really nice. Yes, dear ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing about your professional front or the professional side or the professional space where you are connected with and you're doing your very best. Now, ma'am, something very personal, if I could ask you, what about your personal life? Have you met somebody who's really very kind to you, who you have thought that this person could be my future life partner who understands me and we could live a beautiful life in you know as a couple? Uh, yes, so very recently uh, it happened uh, where, you know, I never thought uh, I could even um, get married. Yes, my family was looking for uh, from past uh, few years. So I recently um, met a person, uh, uh, you know, uh, he uh, showed interest in me and he spoke to my family and all things happened uh, in a very short span of time. And uh, within, um, you know, two, three months, uh, I will be getting married. So uh, his name is Gokul and uh, he's a CA, Chartered Accountant. And a very caring, very kind-hearted person. And uh, I felt, you know, I definitely I could, uh, you know, I got that confidence in him that definitely I could uh, share my life with him. And he's also uh, partially blind. And, uh, you know, we both have some similarities and we can understand each other very well because uh, our challenges are common. That's really nice to find someone who could understand you and who promises to be with you till the very last. And we wish you both a, a lot of happiness and do call, do invite us for your wedding, ma'am. Definitely, definitely. Yes, yeah. really nice. <laughs> I'd love to see you both very soon at the altar and live, living a beautiful life together. Yes, yeah. yeah. Dear ma'am, now let's come down to your favorite food. As you said, sometimes you order food from out. Like what kind of food are you interested in? Which type of cuisine? So I am uh, both vegetarian and non-vegetarian. So ordering food is the second option. But I just love uh, the food my mom makes at home. So ordering is only whenever she's busy or whenever she's out. <laughs> yeah, so 
Uh, my mom makes awesome uh, chicken, awesome food. So uh, I I enjoy to the core. So I fight with her. I want this. I want that. And uh, I ask her to make things for me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, chicken, paneer. So all these things are like my favorite food. What about sweets? Uh, sweet. Uh, uh, yes, I like uh, I like gulab jamun and um, I like sweets made of milk. So they are most. Uh, it's very tough to choose one or two, but yeah, gulab jamun and um, uh, sweets made out of milk like kheer. So all those things are my favorite. Yeah. Yes, dear. That's wonderful. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, like. we go to the next question now you might have seen a lot of people around you all that you've been sharing right from the start is all the positivity only a lot of all only positive things you've never ever said a single negative sentence you've never shared anything negative now if i may ask this question to you what kind of a change you'd love to see in this world do you think the world requires to change somewhere or you feel everything is okay and all right in this world uh there are a lot of things uh... that need to be changed in terms of society so um you know one thing to live in this society is uh, we have to be strong so there are a lot of negative things that come from the society um i have seen um, you know um, especially social gatherings uh, my mom is a bit uh, a little bit sensitive if you ask her something about how i will manage things her uh, sometimes tears start rolling from her eyes because uh, although she knows that i'm very strong but mothers are um, a little sensitive when it comes to their kids so um i want the society to be more empathetic towards you know families of persons with disabilities and you know parents or people around them so uh, by being more empathetic you are motivating them to be one among you so you are not letting them down so most of the people ask how you will do things so this is there's a way of asking it empathetically and uh, demotivating them that you know you cannot do it so uh, that is what um, i see when i travel around uh, you know especially um, uh, when i used to do my mobility training um, actually i am a person who never left my mom's hand and gone anywhere out so wherever i used to go my mom used to uh, take me out i used to hold her hand only and go so um, one day came in a in my life where uh, i have this family friend paul and marlin mom so paul was the one who uh, started so he is like you know every time you can't expect mom to come with you wherever you go you should travel alone you should have that confidence to go so he met he made me meet a person called uh, sabria so she is she is a person from uh, trivandrum and she is also blind and she runs this organization called braille um, without borders uh, kantari um is in kantari and um, she was managing everything on her own and uh, she had a, a stick which is called a white cane and um, i was not so okay to you know start using that because i'm very comfortable and i didn't want to learn something like that and because of uh his guidance he is like no you have to and um, then one day i was like okay ma i cannot take this anymore so <laughs> let me um you know he he told me that i have to join nab nab um, a mobility training is going to start in so and so date you have to contact this person and you have to go you have no other choice so first two weeks was very difficult for me like even my mom came with me it was difficult for her as well to let go of me uh, so easily so uh, uh, in this space so um uh, slowly i got that confidence and whenever i used to travel alone so i had to travel from um, you know um, there's a bus stop called majestic from that to uh, N- nab so whenever i come from there um, usually public they react so badly uh, apart from scolding me they used to scold my parents also why they are letting you out do they have some sense or not how they can leave a person like you out so that's not the way how you react to a person like me 
so uh, you know just because i am blind it doesn't mean i have to sit at home i should not go anywhere out i should not do anything so uh, the society needs more awareness so they should react more empathetically you see if they want to support they should support they, um, by support i mean you should ask them whether they need any help if they need they will ask you what help they need if they don't need any help or if you don't want to help them just keep quiet and just go please don't disturb them so um, a lot of people do that or uh, some people offer money we are you know we don't need money money is not everything right like uh, for example i am i am working so i am earning money so i don't need any public to be sympathetic to me and wherever they see me in public places uh, offer me money uh, so i am not um, you know uh, there for money or something so they should not um, do like that so that awareness is uh, although to a great extent it is better now compared to those times but still there are some part of the society um, you know where they don't want to accept a person like any kind of disability around them so they feel that uh, you know um, you know if we talk to them it's a trouble they'll ask us something we cannot do so all those challenges are there so we have to do something to change that mindset in the society and also they think that you know why marriage or why um, you know people like people with disability have to be like this they should not get into any kind of social responsibility they should be on their own they should be at home they should not trouble others so it is not the trouble it is we also um, would like to be part of the society be like anybody in the society and you know uh, something that's what i i go through on a daily basis yes d i understand ma'am i understand thank you for sharing that very clearly and putting across the table all those important points how to be inclusive how we should have an inclusive society how each of us should be more sensitive towards one another yes yes dear that's wonderful thank you for you know sharing that and creating awareness on this platform and hats off to you for that courage and strength that you've said that i am working and i just need you to be compassionate and empathetic and nothing more and yeah. if you can't help you have no right to speak anything against uh, anybody anything right either you help out in the right way or you stay where you are you need not put in your thoughts and views and like say why are you here with us Uh, you know you can stay at home or you should be at home you are not supposed to come out and create any sort of inconveniences inconvenience to you to anyone so this is not right in, ca in case ma'am if they do that they should be punished by the law i feel that seriously the law has yeah, to be there is case. a law but um, the implementation is not to that extent today yeah. it has to be you know only yeah. then people will get to know today it may be but nothing should happen out of force i mean law everything is fine but yeah. they should have the small thinking uh, basic thinking that you know they are also one among us they might not be able to see or they might not they might be on the wheelchair but that doesn't mean they ha they do not have the right to do anything and everything in the world yes. they ha they should have access to everything yes dear thank you ma'am for sharing that awareness thank you for creating awareness and sharing your thoughts and views that's beautiful ma'am if i may ask you this question what is your uh, i mean connect with your brother how do you, this usually we have the sibling rivalry what is your uh, bonding with your brother if i could put it in the right way i have very good bonding with my brother so we fight we uh, we we order food we do party at home party at home is like uh, whenever my mom and dad goes out so we just um, have a small burger party so like ordering um, burgers pepsi and all that and um, uh, whatever like you know he's always there for me and he supports me whenever i ask him for help literally i bother him for every small things but he never feels bad for anything he's he comes with me he takes me out um you know he cares for the safety of of me uh, like um, uh, just a small instance like i would like to share so um uh, when it comes to my marriage itself so what happened was like couple of years back uh, there was a marriage uh, proposal which came 
and um, that, that person was a sighted person and they were seeing alliance so uh, when they when he came home um, to um, um, see so where he just spoke to my brother uh, something like you know uh, uh, whether this house belongs to you um, uh, you know usually people come for property or something like that right so like that he took my brother out and he asked whether this house belongs to you so what are you doing and all of those things so uh, after they spoke and came inside my brother just told uh, one thing if my sister gets married she should get married to a right person not to a person like this even if she doesn't get married also not no problem but she should not get married to a person like this it's okay i am there for her i will take care of her throughout so that kind of uh, support care is there for me uh, you know uh, family is like a very big blessing for me and uh, he does everything for me he uh, you know whenever i used to uh, during my 12th standard and um, during my exam times whenever my mom is not there he used to make tea for me uh, because um, i used to stay awake for long time and all of that and i used to get up early so he used to make tea for me and uh, uh, you know always he used to support me in every uh, part of my life that's really nice ma'am i'm so glad that you have a wonderful brother like that god bless him and bless you too and in fact every sibling out there should be like this very understanding and compassionate towards your siblings and i'm really proud of you both that's really nice. <laughs> and i like the way he when he spoke to that person you know a potential groom and he got to know the real thought process behind that situation like when he asked about the house and etc he came back and he saved you from disaster right otherwise yeah. there are people who are very greedy they look at the property and a lot of domestic violence so at the end of the day he wishes for my happiness as well so instead of me struggling throughout the life it's okay if if i don't get married at least i'll be i'll not be in the hands of a wrong person so that's what his care was yes dear hats off to that wonderful brother that's so sweet god bless him and i'm so happy that you both are still you know connected with each other and he will be there to the very end that's really nice i wish i had a brother like that too <laughs> yes and a sister like you too dear you're a wonderful <laughs> yeah thank you dear ma'am now i'd like to ask you a very big question i'd like to know your thoughts and views on this see ma'am you're facing a challenge that is you are visually impaired at present in spite of that you are a professional you're working every single day you are connecting with people across the world you're networking you're living a complete life and we find youngsters out there complaining they are all fit and fine they have the best of everything but yet they are cribbing crying and they say they are into depression they are into anxiety and they blame differently that there, there could be different reasons now i would like you to empower them and tell them no matter what you face in life you always have to look something look forward because there's something like this the parents fight at home and that has had an impact on children and when they become adults that has you know transformed into childhood trauma and they start blaming their parents because of my parents today i am like this physically they are fit and fine but inwardly inside their minds their thought process the pattern you know the way of they, the way they think that is not wired in the right way i want you to empower all of those youngsters who are stuck in depression or anxiety please do that favor dear yeah so only one thing that i could say is like every person uh, no matter what like even for me there are my own ups there are my own downs so at times even i feel low at times even i feel uh, let down so uh, that is all part of life it happens so what we must do is we must be open we must have uh, a good network around us at least a very few uh, set of friends around you um, who are there for each other so when you are down you should be open talk to them about anything and everything and try to come out of it because we can't we don't have any control of anything around us so only thing that we can control is our own thoughts our own perspective of looking at things so when we are open when we talk to somebody 
we feel better so like that uh, when my friends are having some um, you know when they are feeling like that if they talk i mean if they feel they should talk to me they will talk to me and they will let go and uh, open up and they will be fine after some time so even at times there are times where you know um, i also feel low i cry all of these things is there it's common it happens so my biggest the uh, strength and my uh, role model is my mom so my she is my best friend so she knows everything like through my facial expression she can figure out what is wrong i i don't have to tell her i am upset for this reason she just tells she just tells i know you are upset for this reason so you need somebody around you uh, it may be your friend it may be somebody around you to say that and then when you are in that company there is no space for depression there is no space for uh, anxiety there is no space where you will uh, have wrong thoughts there is no space for that so you should build that close connection with somebody or or if you are in a so um, bad state you feel that you are not able to control any any more you have to consult a counselor or a coach because they can help you to come out of it because uh, you know uh, uh, many people think that it is uh, you know only people who are mad they should go to counselor or coach or something there is nothing like that even in the smallest of smallest things in, you know if you just talk to a counselor you just talk to a coach they just make they don't they will not help you in any way they'll not help you to solve your problem but they will make you open up they will make you think in different way and your perspective will change and they will make you they will make your perspective will change and then you will think some time back really you had these thoughts so you will only feel bad about why you had such things so there are um, times that even i would have felt low that there's nothing like everything going um, smooth every day right every day there is new challenge you will be down so for me it is my mom so she is my role model so uh, i just look up to her and i learn a lot of i mean although i can't be so much like her but i try to adapt some things and you know uh, she motivates me to be and also i have another friend uh, who is also a life coach uh, his name is arun so whenever i feel low i just talk to him and after like few minutes i'll be like sometime back i was really thinking something like this so <laughs> it happens like that so just you have to talk to somebody so actually speaking there is nothing called depression it is all your mindset so you have to just speak it out you will be fine within some time super and be open even the worst of worst things you have to just be open because there's nothing that can you know stop you from being happy so we only have to create our own happiness by creating building that good network or or one more thing that i do is uh, whenever i feel frustrated whenever i feel uh, uh, you know i can't do anything anymore so i just developed a habit of uh, making some quilling designs out of quilling papers and i also play keyboard i mean although now uh, i don't play that much because of my uh, i don't i do not have that much time because i'm i'm working as well as i am the current president of a rotary club uh, and also um, you know um, a family and a lot of things happening in, in the family so um, other than that i listen to good music very uh, i mostly listen to kannada songs melodious uh, kannada song and then i try to um, come out of it like before i was very cranky so if i get angry on somebody i never used to talk to them for like 3 or 4 days something like that but now uh, i have overcome that the only thing is your daily habits um, the things that you do will change you and also uh, recently i started to learn cooking as well because i have to learn to cook now uh, since i will be getting married soon as well so uh, those new new things will keep you going 
so develop some habits that make you happy go out meet your friends go especially uh, when you go out in the, in the midst of nature right that cool air that environment only will make you so happy so there are a lot of things just open your eyes and look around and just come out of it thank you dear that's really nice thank you very much for empowering our youth and of course even if the middle aged or the senior citizens are feeling depressed or anxious here are beautiful tips being shared by our celebrity and guest chandana ma'am yes dear dear ma'am we we'll go on to the next question if you were supposed yeah, I mean, let me put that right you know i i was completely lost the uh, with the sharing that you just shared like as to how to overcome depression and how to you know be on a much better space so i'm still in that phase now i have to bring bring myself out of it now yes you are really awesome when you shared that dear i'm still stuck there i'm, I'm just going to bounce back to the next question <laughs> yes. yeah. dear ma'am if you happen to meet the almighty or if you believe in the universal energy either ways and if they were to give you a boon or a gift in in the form of a superpower what kind of a superpower or a boon would you select uh actually a lot of people have asked me that question and i used to be uh, very funny um, i i am a, a fan of gadgets okay like i love having uh, expensive uh, gadgets around me but i don't like to spend too much on them <laughs> but i like to whenever i uh, see somebody having it i feel like i wish ha i have this one day so <laughs> whenever somebody asks me that question i'll like i'll say i would like to have all accessible apple products with me <laughs> but that's a funny part so um uh if i happen to meet uh, the most thing lacking in today's world is uh, that mental peace and happiness so i always wish that i also should be happy and people around me also should be happy and i like to create uh, happiness in the small small things that i do for others or others do for me so happiness and peace is the most important thing that i need to you know a survive so that's what i feel but yeah the apple part was like just for fun i keep telling everyone so if i meet almighty i'll just ask i need all the products <laughs> that i need <laughs> so that's the funny part yes dear and we wish you receive all the apple products as soon as possible if somebody is <laughs> there at the large heart <laughs> come forward and you can gift ma'am yeah no that is only because they are accessible yes dear. so everything you can do everything like uh, i recently um, three years back and i got an iphone uh, because um, my phone got spoiled and i didn't know which one else to buy so it is uh, three years i have bought it even now it doesn't hang for a minute also so it's like a very friendly product so that's why i feel like you know uh, whether it be ipad or macbook they're very accessible for One. people like me That's really nice. Thank you for sharing that, ma'am. Thank you so much. And of course, you've like raised awareness and created a little ad for the Apple products too. I hope <laughs> the owner of Apple views this and they come forward and really, you know, like I feel you are something like a brand ambassador for. <laughs> Nothing like that, but yeah, I I, uh, I will buy them whenever it is possible for me. How sweet! Yeah. <laughs> Humble of you, dear ma'am. now we come down to the next question dear the next question is like this now if you are in a situation where you feel people are treating you in a way that you are not happy you're not okay you can sense that yes your gut instincts could tell you or you could sense that something's not okay here or do you cut off with them forever or do you forgive them how do you deal with that situation when you feel i am not treated in the right way so there are two uh perspective to this so if i don't know them um so usually if it is a large gathering uh, you know i can't uh, make a large gathering <laughs> you know treat me the way i want so i just um, uh, keep quiet and um, you know i just um, be there for my purpose and after my purpose is uh, like for example i have been there for some meeting so if the meeting is over i'll just uh, go away from there 
so if if it happens with my close circle or somebody who i have spoken um couple of days or something so i will explain to them so this is not the way it should be so this these are the words is um, uh, like for example um, you know um, they use fancy words like wheelchair bound and all of those things so those words they should not use because they should use something like a person with disability a person on a wheelchair or a person who is blind because a person also deserves a respect so uh, i i try to explain to them or some people um, what even large gathering they would not have that awareness so if i feel something is um, not right there i would like uh, what i will do i will explain to them by giving them certain examples like it should be in this particular way like for example you are talking to a blind person uh, a blind person doesn't know you are standing in front of them and uh, talking to them so if you can lightly uh, tap on their shoulder and say hey hi and introduce you by your name because uh, for us what happens is name remembering yeah we will remember that is not an issue like a lot of my friends you know even you meet them after 10 years um, you know they are blind and they will still remember your name but uh, for a person like me it's, um, if i have not met you for a long time uh, it's difficult for me to catch that voice although i'll remember but it takes some time so instead of asking who am i or you know all of those things if you talk, just say hey this is me like this is um um uh, uh, this is reena or this is um, andrea so something like that if you introduce if you just say there's nothing wrong and um, uh, just try to um, rather than forcing your help on them just try to um, you know ask them exactly if they need some help uh i actually uh, maybe i deviated your question uh i forgot what <laughs> what you asked i'm sorry no, just yeah, can you, you share that very question? well you shared that very well yeah, yeah so um i just explained to them uh, yeah i i remember the question so i just explained to them this is how it should be uh so i would like to share one experience uh, recently i had been to a friend's birthday party and um, there were uh, there was one small kid so um, his father was telling him that uh, i am blind so he is literally um, um uh, trying to test whether i i can really see or not so that is a small kid so you can't say that is bad because they are kids they don't know what to do but his father was so gentle so if you explain to them what to be done what not to be done they will understand so that is how you uh, make people aware of what you are around you so especially to my close friends i just tell them on <laughs> i fight with them this is not the way it should be this is only, this is the way it should be this is how you should treat them should never let anyone down although they cannot do it's fine there's no harm in trying okay if they cannot do they will leave it at least they will try it right at least they'll be happy that they tried so like for example uh, when i go out uh, to any resorts or something most of the adventurous games i cannot play so maybe um, there's a shooting arrow or something maybe i don't know where that arrow is going and hitting but i can just try how far it goes so there's no harm so but uh, at least allow them to try don't uh, stop them from doing anything so that's what i uh, tell my close circle even in my home they never uh, let me uh you know they never stop me from doing any anything they just give me that opportunity they give me my own space uh, if i'm not able to do it that is a different question but at least they'll let me try so that's how it should be around yes that's beautiful thank you for sharing your beautiful thoughts on that question ma'am thank you so much now we have a small segment called as the rapid fire round which will take another 10 minutes it yeah. will be a quick session yes dear Thank you, friends, for being with us, and thank you, dear guests, for being with us on this beautiful journey called as the Rapid Fire Round. Now we'll get to know about Ma'am's likes and dislikes. She's Chandana Ma'am, joining us all the way from Bangalore, Karnataka, India. Dear Ma'am, your favorite month among all the twelve months? 
Uh, maybe my birthday month, <laughs> October. Which, which date? <laughs> October 19th. 19th. Great. So we'll wish you for your birthday, dear. That's really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Your favorite day of the week? Uh, it's very hard to choose. Um, yeah, actually weekends because I enjoy more uh, Saturday, Sunday. I Mostly I am into rotary events or out with friends or out with family. Uh, so yeah, weekends. Your favorite snack, ma'am? Uh, snack. Uh, tough to choose. Um, I like um, I like biscuits, chocolates. So yeah, yeah, I'm crazy about chocolates. So <laughs> yeah. Dear ma'am, your favorite season? Season uh, the winter. It should not be raining or it should not be too sunny. Uh, it should be pleasant. I like cool and pleasant season. So winter. Yes. Your favorite mode of transport? Uh, car. I love traveling in car, long drive. And yeah. Yes. Dear. As you earlier mentioned that you listen, you love to listen to Kannada songs. Would you yeah. oblige to sing a song for us? Uh, no, I'm very bad at singing. <laughs> Try just a line. Please. No, 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 no. I'm very bad at singing. My singing is like poetry, so. It could be one <laughs> line. Why don't you give it a try? You could you, mm. you could try, dedicate this song to somebody very who's very close to you, to your mom, to your brother. To your, no, uh, ma'am, I'm very bad at singing. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. I will not uh, pleasurize you. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. What is that one thing you love about you? At least maybe know your favorite song. The name of your uh, favorite song. Uh, favorite song. Uh, I like uh, I like this song called uh, I don't know which movie it is from but uh, um, I like the song Ninindale I think it's from Milana. So it's a Canada song. So I like that song. Okay. That's wonderful. That's really nice. What is that one thing you love about yourself? Uh, I what I love about myself, just the way I am, and uh, um, you know, my mom has made me so confident. Uh, so uh, maybe my strength. I I just love uh, who I am today, and um, for what I am today, I love being myself. And I like to be, I, I'm, I'm some, at least two people who I am close. I'm always kiddish. I, I, <laughs> I try to be kiddish, something like that. So I like th that part of me. So I like being funny and kiddish to people around, uh, people who are close to me at least. Oh, that's really nice to have the inner child alive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, dear. Now, dear ma'am, how many languages are you conversant in? Uh, I know um, Kannada English very well, uh, very uh, little of Hindi uh, because I studied Hindi till my 10th standard, but I, am, I feel very hard to speak and now uh, I have to uh, learn Tamil because uh, my, uh, you know, life partner is, uh, uh, you know, at his home, everyone talks Tamil, so I have to learn Hindi and Tamil. <laughs> but very fluently, I speak Kannada and English. Yes, dear. That's really nice. And Tamil is a beautiful language. You could learn that very quickly. Uh, yeah. And I know, like, very, uh, like, one word in Telugu also. So, like, uh, like I know, like, Bojana Mayanda. So, some, like, little bit, I can understand Telugu also. Like, at least, uh, maybe 0.5%. Wow. Not too much, but yeah. <laughs> Dear ma'am, how would you define a beautiful day according to you, just in one word? Uh, one word. Again, happy day, smile, peaceful, that's all. Wonderful. Either it's a happy day, a great smile, or a, you smile the whole day and that yeah. was really beautiful. On the whole, you could say a peaceful day. One filled with peaceful day. Yeah. That's really wonderful, dear. Ma'am, now you, you're connected with books and as well as a number of experiences. 
So how would you describe life or how would you like answer this question? Life is all about experience or is it experiential learning or theoretical learning? Uh, can you just repeat the question? Is it experiential learning or theoretical learning? Experiential learning. Uh, we learn through experience. That's what I believe in. Every experience, every new thing that you do, every step that you take in life uh, will teach you something. Yes. But uh, we have to be open to come out of our comfort zone. Uh, be open to experience that we have to, uh, although I'm, I mean, I'll admit that I'm not a person who easily accepts to take risks, but at times I feel that, you know, I, I also should, uh, it's a slow process, but yeah, I, I am, you know, uh, going to move towards taking higher risk in life as well. Yes, that's really nice. Wonderful, ma'am. Last two questions, dear. Till date, the most precious gift that you've ever received. Uh, precious uh, gift, yeah, the brailer. I never thought I would have that in my life. So it, uh, I used to write my notes in braille slate and when it came, I, my hand pain reduced and I everything I could type over that machine, braille typewriter. That was the precious gift. Excellent, that's wonderful, ma'am. Before we come to an end to the session for today, dear, of course, we'll be connected in the future as well with you on different topics as to how we should lead our life and how we should be strong because you have a lot of potential within you where you could inspire the youth, the middle-aged and the senior citizens as well. And of course, the little students as well. Dear ma'am, we'd like you to share with us three magical words in the form of a gift to the International Fab Talks towards the end of the session. Um, magical words... Uh... Apart from please, sorry, and thank you. <laughs> uh, just love yourself. So when you love yourself, you love everything around you. So I think love yourself, three words. Love yourself. That's beautiful. We forget to love ourselves. We start doing things for others. We think about others. We give our all to others, but we forget to love ourselves. Many of the uh, times we've seen people doing yeah. that. But this is love yourself thing. and accept yourself wow. who you are rather than uh, thinking that you're not like that person, you're not like this person. So you have your own potential, you have your own strength. When you accept yourself, you feel like doing more, learning more. That's wonderful, dear. God bless you, ma'am. Uh, stay connected, stay blessed, and we wish you all happiness in all your endeavors. You're one warm, gentle person who have come across. Uh, very sweet, very nice, and I love your voice, and I love the way you speak in English. Hats off. <laughs> thank you. Thank Command you so you much for this opportunity. I really loved uh, interacting with you, and awesome opportunity. Thanks for, for inviting me. Thank you, ma'am. We look forward to many more interactions with you. Lots of love. Stay blessed. Stay connected, dear. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, dear. Dear friends, with this, we come to an end to the International Fab Talks for today, my dear friends. Don't forget to share this beautiful video with the right kind of people. Let them be aware that they have to treat and, you know, be kind to people with special needs. They should be inclusive. They should have this mindset of being inclusive or an inclusive society and not to just cut off people just because they find that something is wrong or they find that they are not suitable in that company where they are in. So it's time that we give due respect to each and every individual on this earth. And with this, we'd like to sign off. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and comment as well. If you like what we are doing, stay connected with us, bond with us. And of course, you could reach out to us. We are always there with you to highlight your story, to highlight your journey. Today, we've celebrated the beautiful life journey of a wonderful person. She is Chandana C. Chandana Chandrasekhar. Am I right, ma'am? Absolutely. God bless you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.